good evening, and I'm delighted to tell you that this is the last video for this school year. Tonight, we will look at acid-base indicators and titration. Let's begin by looking at indicators and pH meters. We're first going to look at the indicator. This can be a liquid that you drop into your acid or your base, or it can be a piece of paper in which you can test a drop of your acid or base on it. Both of these substances are going to have compounds whose colors are sensitive to pH. So the color is going to tell us the strength of our acid or our base. The range then over which an indicator changes color is called its transitional interval. So that's how we're going to determine what the pH is. pH meters determine the pH of a solution by measuring voltage between two electrodes in the solution. Because remember, when you have pH, we measure the hydronium ion concentration. Well, hydronium ion is an ion, so you've got negative and positive charges, so you can get a voltage going between or in the solution. Our voltage then will change with the hydronium ion concentration thus giving us the pH. And this will be more of a precise value since it's a digital printout of what the pH is compared to the paper in which you have to kind of compare uh, two different colors. Titration is defined as the controlled addition and measurement of the amount of a solution of known concentration required to react completely with a measured amount of a solution of unknown concentration. So it sounds very confusing, but it really isn't that bad. Basically, it's going to help us determine chemically equivalent volumes of acid, acids and bases in solutions. Remember that chemically equivalent. So we're going to basically try to neutralize a solution. When we work with titration, we are trying to find an equivalence point. So the point at which the two solutions are chemically equal. And we're going to use those indicators and those pH meters to help determine that equivalence point. Just looking at it or knowing how much we're adding, we're not going to really be able to tell exactly how much that should be. But we can use math, which you're going to see in a minute, or we can use nice indicators and look for a certain color change to happen. The end point is the point then we're going to try to hit, and that is the point at which the indicator changes color in a titration. The type of indicator that we use to measure the end point will depend on its transitional interval. So we have lots of different types of acids and bases. Uh, lots of different strengths, so we have lots of different indicators that we can use to do this. So our indicator has to kind of fall within that range. We keep talking about the type of indicator you're going to use depends on the type of titration. So what kinds of titrations can we have? And the first type of titration is a strong acid, strong base type of titration. Its equivalence point is going to be about a pH of 7, so it's going to be pretty neutral. But we can mix a strong acid with a weak base. So now you've got something that's on that low end of the pH scale and something that's not, you know, just a little bit higher than neutral. So it's going to have an equivalence point that is somewhat lower than 7. So we're not going to be right in the middle, we're going to be a little bit lower. So this is still going to be an acidic solution. If we go the other way, if we have a weak acid and mix it with a strong base, we're going to see a similar thing happen, but this time the pH is going to be more in the base range because the base has that stronger number. So instead of being truly in the middle, it's going to be a little bit higher than neutral. And then, of course, you can add a weak acid to a weak base. And if you're going to guess, 
you would say your equivalence point, again, is going to be about a pH of 7. However, equivalence point is going to be very hard to read in this case because you're not going to have that big jump in pH as you've seen in the previous pictures. So if we go back and look at this weak acid strong base, you see that there is this big spike at the equivalence point. So we are jumping from one to another. So we kind of take that middle range here. But we can see that nice big jump in pH. However, if we look back at our weak and weak, there isn't a big jump. It's more of a gentle slope. So it's going to be a lot harder to tell when that equivalence point happens. So now let's look at it more mathematically. We're going to find an actual molarity of an unknown. So to do that, we need a standard solution, a solution that contains a known amount of solute. We know how much solute was dissolved in that water to make this solution, this either acidic or basic solution. And we're going to use this then to determine the molarity of the other solution through titration. So you have your known and you're going to have your unknown. And we are going to titrate. So here are the steps for solving a titration problem. First, we need to determine the moles from the known solution that we are using. So you're going to have a molarity. You're going to know how much you have of that solution. So from there, we can find moles. Then we are going to determine the moles of unknown solution used during that titration. To do this, we need to write a balanced neutralization or double replacement reaction. Then using the information in that balanced equation, we're going to do a mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry problem. These were the simple ones, remember, so let's not get scared with this stoichiometry word again. This is just a mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry. Now that we have moles of the second solution, we can determine the molarity because we know how much we have. So now we have moles that were used to neutralize so that they're chemically equivalent now. And we know the amount we used so we can determine the molarity. Let's try one. So we have a 15.5 milliliter sample of 0.215 molar KOH solution. It requires 21.2 milliliters of an aqueous acetic acid solution in a titration experiment. And these titration experiments you are actually going to do. What is the molarity then of the acetic acid solution? So let's look at step one. In step one, first thing you need to do is determine the moles of the known solution. So here is my known solution. I know the molarity of this solution. So I am going to find the moles of KOH. So here is going to start my step one. So I have 0.215 molarity, capital M, and that equals moles which we don't know, which we are trying to find. So x moles over liters of solution. Well, I have milliliters, so I need to change it. So remember, 15.5 milliliters. We're going to move it back. One, two, three. So if we move it back three, this becomes 0 0.01. 5, 5 liters, and we're going to plug that in here. Then we solve for x, and x equals 0 0.0032 moles. So we've got step one. Step two, we need to write a balanced neutralization reaction, basically just a double replacement reaction. So we've got KOH that we're going to add to acetic acid, 
CH3COOH. So remember, this is positive, negative, negative, positive. It's one of the few that are actually written out of order. And we are going to switch the positives. So we're going to switch these with each other. So we end up with HOH, which we all know is just water, but we'll leave it in that form for balancing, plus KCH3COO, and we'll leave it at that. So we've got negative, positive, positive, negative, both or all of them are of a one, so positive one, negative one, so there's no crisscrossing needed. So now we just have to look to see if we're balanced. So I've got 1K, 1K, 1OH, 1OH, 1CH3, COO, 1CH3, COO, 1H, 1H. So we are balanced. Again, because you're going to do a multiple stoichiometry, you have to make sure that you balance and you have to make sure that you check the charges on this opposite side. You guys are forgetting to do that a lot. So don't forget to check the charges. Then we're going to do moles to mole stoichiometry. So this is what we're given. Remember, this is moles of KOH. So that's where we're going to start with our step two. So we did our balanced equation. Now we're going to do our mole to mole stoichiometry. So I'm going to take 0 0.0032 moles times my line. Remember, this is of KOH. So we're going to put moles of KOH on the bottom. Then we're going to put moles of CH3COOH on top. In this case, it's 1 to 1. So we know it's going to be 0 0.0032 moles of CH3, COOH, or acetic acid. So there is step two. We've done our balancing, we've done our neutralization reaction, and then we've done our moles to mole stoichiometry. So step three is to take this moles, plug it back into the molarity equation to find the molarity of our new substance. So step three. We're going to take 0 0.0032 moles, and we are going to, so again, that's from there, and we are going to plug it in to the equation, so we need to change our acetic acid amount, which is in milliliters again. So 1, 2, 3, 0 0.0212 liters. Do the math, and we get 0.15 molar acetic acid solution.